In my recent incarceration, I think um, it uh, began, the ordeal began on the 17th of February 2021. And uh, I got out on the 6th of January. That's 10 months, 22 days in terms of the ordinary calendar. In terms of the prison calendar, it's one year, three months. In, yeah, it was, you know, in terms of one short word, it was, it was painful in terms of describing the experience. I was in remand, then I was, I went to the other prison where con convicts are kept. I went there for three months. After my conviction, which was clearly a travesty of justice, I was able to teach me how 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 to it was very straightforward, even the judge asked it. Why is the state opposing bail pending appeal on this case? So, yeah, it was very painful on so many levels. Physically, eh, mentally, yeah, and why am I saying so? With the living conditions, you know, prisoners, they are also human beings at the end of the day, and they deserve to be treated like human beings. I think that's uh, the most important thing. Because if you look at, in terms of basic space, prisons are overcrowded. If we look at basic, um, you know, uh, surfaces, uh, like ablution surfaces, a uh, prison, like especially Taralman prison, it was a kind of you know, semi, you know, permanent sewer state. Because like in the D-class section, where they are the most dangerous and violent criminals we are kept, it's where I was staying. You were supposed to be 300 in terms of maximum number. But uh, as the, of the day I left, we were 756. So imagine the toll it had even on water. There were water shortages. Water just to wash hands, it was, it was a luxury. Water to just uh, to bath, it was a luxury. Water to drink, it was difficult to get by. And uh, we are saying this is a prison which is in Arara, the capital city. Of, 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 of the country a few meters from the state house. So it's something where we expect better living standards, but uh, things were pretty bad. It was that bad. And t to the extent that t tangible evidence, people had Pelagia there. I didn't know about Pelagia until I saw people with great skin. Shortage of nutrition board. Such a balanced diet. That's how bad it is in terms of your basic survival. Then we go to even the treatment by the officers. Yes, there are others who are a professional, but uh, we also have a very good number, which is highly unprofessional. We are still dealing with the mentality. Yeah, 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 Zimbabwe prison services. But it's now Zimbabwe. ZPC, Zimbabwe Prison and Correctional Services, instead of rehabilitating prisoners, rehabilitating inmates, they actually do more to harden them, abuse them in terms of their rights, in terms of the Prison Act and the Constitution. So these are a whole lot of things which you will be seeing in one place, nowhere to go, you are looked up. So it creates a very painful environment. And also further, this overcrowding in prisons, it's something that we cannot per se blame the Zimbabwe Prison and Correctional Services alone. Because theirs is just to, to, to keep the inmates. But it's also evidence of, you know, how our justice system is inefficient. You have people going for over two years, no trial. People going for, you know, a very long periods of time. Their cases have not yet been concluded, they are in remand prison. It's pre-trial incarceration, it's not fair, it's pre-trial detention. And uh, most of the times you discover that the courts will end up convicting people for the sake of justifying their prolonged stay in prison. Because they can't justify that after uh, three, four years, you're on remand. You're being denied bail, which is a right. Then you are found uh, not guilty. It's also something which is a problem and a good number of people in, uh, within the prisons are victims of an inefficient justice system which needs, you know, to be reformed, which needs an offer. This experience, it strengthened me more. It deepened in terms of my conviction, my resolve.
because it gave me an opportunity to reflect for a long time. It gave me an opportunity without bias, without any distractions, to think about the situation we are in as Zimbabwe. It gave me the opportunity to understand even the system, our government system, deeper. Why? Because a prison is a state institution, and you get obviously more exposed to the ongoing in government on a day-to-day -day basis. Look, you get to, be, you'll be staying with prison officers there. You'll be staying with, like recently, there was a spate in terms of high-ranking soldiers who are getting arrested and convicted. You get to talk to them. We have members of the CIO who are getting arrested and they are in prison. We get to meet them. We have ruling party officials, especially when they were doing their congresses, provincial congresses. A good number of them, you know, were thrown into prison, you know, politicking and uh, whatever they were doing. So it gave me time to really talk to them on a heart-to-heart -heart basis. Understand what does an ordinary police officer think. And mind you, these were not ordinary police officers. They were high-ranking police officers, high-ranking soldiers. Well, how do they think? Understanding how do these government officials think? So it gave me an opportunity to deepen my understanding and strengthen my resource. Of course, I understood that uh, my incarceration on its own was nothing. Yes, just like everyone, I am scared of prison. But I discovered that what made me endure and what keeps me going on is because I'm more scared of something bigger than my own imprisonment. I'm more scared of the imprisonment of Zimbabwe, the imprisonment of the, of the country. It's more scary for me. So, because what it means is the soul of the nation is suffocated. It means the past is holding the future in suffocation. It means we're not progressing as a country. And, you know, I only spoke about these high-ranking people within, you know, the government, various government sectors, the security, even government. I also speak to young people who are getting into prison. Most of them is because they have no hope. They try to go the education way. It's expensive. They can't access education. Even those who he managed to, to graduate at various levels, be it all level, A level, or even at a diploma or degree level. They can't get employment. They are now being forced into petty crimes for survival, drug abuse. You see that a good number of young people, thousands of them, they are in prisons. It's the future which is, you know, in Kwandari. It's a, we are going nowhere as a nation. So to answer your question in short, it gave me, you know, more power to to, to, to fight more, to fight harder. Because what is at stake will no longer be my freedom as an individual, but it's the collective freedom uh, as the nation. Uh, number one, what they should learn is that um, we need to, 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 to reflect deeper as, as young people. We need to put you know, our future as number one to priority before anything else. And to the issue of activism of uh, fighting for our rights you know it's not just for our rights but it's for our collective freedom socially economically politically but as a generation we are excluded from main living governance platforms how many ministers are young people how many members of parliament are young people even our local government authorities how many councillors are young people then from there this is the only governance level let's go to the economic level how many young people have farms in Zimbabwe? How many young people are running mines in Zimbabwe? How many young people own, you know, big companies? How many young people are getting tender? Let's go to tenders, like Command Agriculture, over one billion. Very lucrative, you know, business deals. How many young people are also getting a fair chance at that? We don't even go there. Let's go even to social. How many young people are managing even to, 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 to marry, run families? If you check, go to the courts right now, the divorce cases are much more than those who are married. It's the bro break, break, breaking down of our social structure, and it's not just that uh, the young people we are, uh, you know, wayward. We are. It's influenced by the economy. It's influenced the economy is influenced by the way we are governed. So we have to think this is more than just about uh, activism for the sake of activism. It's about saving, you know, Zimbabwe, the future of the nation. So. Uh, Another thing they need to learn is that yeah, prison is prison. People get in and get out. And like the time I spent, it's nothing compared to what the likes of Nelson Mandela spent. It's nothing compared to, you know, 
what the likes of Itaid Zamara who paid the ultimate price. It's nothing compared to them. It's nothing compared to people who were victimized in 2008, long sleeve, short sleeve. It's nothing compared to that. So what you must know is we have something bigger, bigger than ourselves that we are fighting for. We are just part, you know, agents for change in a change process. And to, once we make that decision, we must know that uh, we have even signed up for the risks that we may face, the dangers, the hazards. But these are nothing compared to, well, and sitting back is as dangerous as moving forward. Because it's better to, 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 to die going forward than in die as heroes, than to sit back and die as cowards. Yeah, I can, this is something that can be provided for, you know, be supported by scientific facts. How many people like here in Mashungo province over the years, how many people have died due to cholera than due to political failings? Which one is the bigger number? I'm sure those who have died due to cholera are higher than those who died due to persecution for activism. Why? Those who are dying due to cholera is because they are choosing to sit back and not to hold councillors to account, not to hold ministers to account, to ensure that we need clean water. We deserve water is a right in the constitution. So if we stand resolute and demand water, I can tell you that fewer people will die of, 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 of typhoid or cholera. And definitely very fewer people will really suffer or be victimized at the end of the day. Even if we are to be victimized demanding for water, I will tell you the numbers will be way, way lower than those who die because of cholera. So it's about also evaluating and knowing that uh, Yes, there are risks, but they are worth it. You know, to save ourselves in the future. My biggest takeaway uh, is that uh, Zimbabweans were strong people. That is our generation, we are, you know, we are fighters, we are not cowards. We love our country, but our government is shortchanging us. We are patriots. My biggest takeaway was that, uh, you know, patriotism is, means more than empty slogans or all the symbols. It means something, something deeper. That our country with a bigger attachment, bigger reasons to be attached to our country than just uh, slogans and, and, and symbols. So, yeah, how I discovered this was, number one, the fantastic solidarity I got across Zimbabwe and beyond by young people. There were young people who were arrested, if we were to speak of, yeah, in Mashingo, where I am right now, in Chiredzi. There were young people who were arrested, go to Chivi, I think in Chile they offered that. They were arrested for standing solidarity with me. And it's in as far I was arrested in Arar, but in the Chile growth point, they stood up in solidarity. And uh, for me, it shows that uh, uh, as a people, we, we want better. As a people, we deserve better. As a people, we have love for our country. Uh, yeah, so my biggest takeaway was I uh, should fight one. Uh, the way forward is organizing, continue to organize. Because if we tend as a people to agonize, to cry, uh, this has happened, uh, the two billion has been looted. Yeah, they've arrested so, so, and so. Uh, they've done this. Uh, we are always in agonizing mode, but we now need to organize. And like, for me, I believe that uh, the Marco that went into prison, he uh, had a lesser voice than the Marco that came out. So it's more, more is of a b b empowerment for me to organize on a better level, you know. So, yeah, the way forward is we need to organize because if we don't organize, it, things will get worse and worse. And now we're approaching the elections. As young people, we need to give our, you know, final shot in as far as trying to change things. Because if we don't spend 2023, there's the danger that we end up losing a, a, a faith in these formal processes. We we'll end up losing faith, so we need to give it a shot. We need to register and vote. We register and vote is the first stage, voting is the second stage. Then actually securing the victory is another stage, but it can only be done if we register in our numbers to vote. But if we register in our numbers, it will even raise the rigging ceiling. It will raise, you know, the cost. It will be difficult to, 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 to really he manipulates the, the, the people's will. So for me now, as of now, what I'm doing my message is to all, especially young people, because we are more than 70% of the population. Yet if we check 
the percentage of ASEAN poor areas at fault, we don't even reach that. We need to reach ten fault because on the ballot box, it's not a political party or a political figure. On the ballot box are jobs. On the ballot box is good education. On the ballot box is quality employment. On the ballot box is a better smart for all. On the ballot box are you know for farming better farming opportunities for young people. On the ballot box, uh, you know, I have a friend, she's South African. He, when I came out of prison, she was saying, I know if you're a woman, I know if you can sit, but how? You know, she was telling me about mortgages. Of course, this is something that I learned way back at Kokumere when I was doing commerce. But after I left Kokumere and I stopped studying commercial subjects, I never heard of a mortgage again. It's something that can happen in Zimbabwe. We can own properties. It's the good life that we don't believe is possible. For a young person to even think of owning a property now. But that is on the ballot paper. So we need race and vote. This arrest, the last arrest, it was the uh, my arrest number 37 since 2011. So in terms of the charges, some of them have been taken, you know, beaten up by the police at the police station, then released. So I think, all in all, in terms of the charges, was I've been, I was arrested. I've been arrested like an average of three times a year since 2011. And in 2016, you know, I think I had seven charges <laughs> that were that were running. So I and suddenly I just want to go proper. Telling good much is mangan, but uh, yeah, I've come to understand good arrests are part of the process, and uh, I've also come to accept they shouldn't detain me. I've also come to accept good, uh, yeah, it will end, and that we have to fight harder for all this to end. And also, I've come to appreciate that, yeah, maybe no struggle, yeah. maybe just doing the new Zimbabwe, but uh, I've it. I said something I'll really try and get maybe. I've never been asked this question, you know. So I'll try to talk to my lawyers over there, knowing I need to see the, <laughs> the exact cases with the last and quoting can Nichi. So but I something that must end. You know, it's not fair, it's not good. And also my feeling is that it should never be for anyone. That's why I try and push it out. It's not fair for another human being to get in there. You know, it's it's inhuman treatment and it's also not fair if it's coming from our fellow you know black fathers who are our you know our heroes they are turning into you know our tremendous it's not fair and these are the people it's difficult now especially for our generation back then it was easy it was easy to identify the enemy it was very easy could no do a to try for it good some it was very, but nowadays it's difficult. Because it's our fellow black, black fathers, black brothers, black sisters, black mothers. So it's not, it's not fair. I'm in charge to support people registering to vote. You know, it's better to spend five minutes in a queue to register to vote than to spend five years living this life we are living. Life of lack of hope, hopelessness. You know, lack of hope is the worst thing that can ever happen to a human being. You know, when someone commits suicide, it means they've lost all hope. You see, when someone even does suicide actions and activities or even engages in dangerous drugs, it means they've lost hope. I'm not sure what I'm saying. 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 Because we would see them coming to prison, some of them. I don't know if you can But so you find it, it's lack of hope. So my most central message is that we need to register to force. Even if you go through the drugs, you can go to the Glenfield Dish 21 years. And it can only happen in a better economy. And the animal has you know, adverse effects on health. So we need to register to force.